when I'm troweling down and it just gets really hard and I can dig no further, I kind of get this scraping. I have to, to stop and let it melt so that I can really find out if, if it's something cultural or just something natural down there. In 2007, two Park Service archaeologists, Andy Tremaine and Cody Straith, found uh, an archaeological site at Maturak Lake. Uh, the site's located in the Brooks Range, gates of the Arctic National Park, near the headwaters of the Noatak River, so it's a tundra zone, no trees, it's a wide open river valley. And Cody and Andy found the site eroding at the edge of the lake. We did it kind of a cool way in that we got flown into the uppermost lake that you can land in in the Noatak and then we backpacked for a week upriver and we carried with us these little uh, miniature boats, the, they call, they're called alpacas, and then we rafted back down to the lake that we'd put in. But then we had the plane come again with more food and another boat and we floated from there down to here, which is like 40 miles or something. People do it for vacation. We get paid to do it. <laughs> the Maturak Lake site is a, one of about 1,700 sites that we've documented in the park. We estimate there's tens of thousands, but it's a big place, and we've only been doing archaeology there for a few decades. Uh, we'll probably never find all those sites. And when I started investigating, closer into this grass, the, uh, there's a little bit of a cut face. We got down there and you could see the bones actually still in place, sticking out of, of the profile. Initially I was unimpressed. I, we, every year we come back from the end of a summer with all kinds of good leads and most of them don't pan out. <laughs> most of the time our high hopes uh, are just that. And then I found a little stone tool that was reminiscent to me of Arctic small tool tradition, though at the time I was not completely certain that that's what it was. Knowing that there's very few sites that have bones associated with, with stone tools of that uh, tradition, we figured we should come back before it eroded down the slope and into the lake. Well, Andy was persistent, and he's a good enough archaeologist that I trust his instincts on this. And the fact that the site was eroding, the site was seeing some impacts, it gave some urgency to following up on this. We could tell that some of the bones had been cut too, and that just made it more exciting. It's like, wow, why are there these bones snapped in half, and why are these bones cut? Some of them were burned, so we knew that it was the result of people leaving them behind. Then when we got results back from radiocarbon dating and confirmed that the site was about 4,000 years old, then uh, it, was, uh, it was exciting. It was a, we knew it was a major find then. That's a small tibia. Yeah. That, what is that? That's not a... It's too big for a wolf. It's, it's not too big for a wolf. I have that other caribou tibia down at the tent now. Oh yeah, okay, that I'll okay. bring up. All the previous bones found in Alaska and Denby sites would fit in the palms of two outstretched hands or in a, would fit in a soup can. <laughs> Not a lot. What we've interpreted this to be is part of what we call a midden. And a midden is essentially a prehistoric trash dump. So all the uh, animal bones and cracked rock and stone tools that may have broke that they didn't want anymore were discarded to an area of the site where they probably were not actually sleeping or or living so much. So some of the animals that we've discovered so far at this site are definitely lots of caribou. Uh, we found doll sheep and wolf bones. We have also found a small mammals that include ground squirrel and possibly marmot or porcupine. We've got a number of fish bones. Fish bone does not typically preserve very well, but we know we have grayling and some burbot, 
And I'm trying to also determine if we got lake trout. And what about that bird bone? Oh yeah. And as a matter of fact, we do have some bird that has showed up here. Here's a little bird bone. We have just uncovered from this section of the midden. And although they're not real numerous, I know we have some ptarmigan bones. And um, I would really like to find some other seasonal migratory birds, but uh, so far that nothing conclusive has turned up. Love them birds. <laughs> Kentucky fried ptarmigan here. <laughs> we think that one of the things contributing to the great preservation at the site is that it was probably buried rapidly and the permafrost rose up to freeze those bones and organic tools. So they've been frozen for 4,000 years or close to it and unthawing now as the lake erodes into the deposit or we excavate down into it. So for the first time in 4,000 years, these artifacts uh, are unfrozen. As far as bones go, we have over 40,000 bone fragments. Of those, probably about 800 so far are identifiable to species and elements. A total count of everything would be over over 40,000 artifacts. <laughs>